Hi. Hi, students. This is Dr. Badrinath, and uh, today's topic is a uh, very important and compulsory question for uh, regular examinations and uh, competitive exams also, glaucoma. A very important disease and very interesting also, right? Uh, so, drugs used in the glaucoma. Glaucoma is a disease of the eyeball that we know very well. Eye is uh, just like, a, it looks like a cricket ball inside, but we cannot see complete eye directly, okay? Right. So what is this glaucoma and all we will see. So we are studying a subject of uh, pharmacology one theory as per the syllabus of Pharmacy Council of India, okay, for pharmacy students. And uh, it is a common for MBBS, all medical and paramedical courses. Yeah. And this is a syllabus here. Uh, we have already completed this one. Drugs used in MySCCI Gravis is already completed and uploaded the video. And uh, uh, here today, drugs used in the glaucoma. This is a, we are the topic we are going to be complete. Right. So what is this glaucoma? See, if you see the structure of the eye, it looks like a round shape. Uh, it looked like a round shape. Inside there was a aqueous humor, very, very important bit. See here, aqueous humor. See the pointer here where I'm showing that aqueous humor is present inside the eyeball. So this area consists of a liquid. That liquid name is called as a aqueous humor, okay? So always there is a pressure on the inner walls of the eye. See here, pressure. See here, pressure is there, that pressure, okay? So pressure, just like a blood pressure, here also pressure will be there, exerted by the aqueous humor on the inner uh, layers or inner parts of the, uh, inner walls of the eyeball, okay? This is called as a IOP, intraocular. Intra means inside, intraocular. Pressure. What is the reason for this intraocular pressure? Is it is a this glaucoma is a complex eye disease. Why we are calling it as a very complex means because number of factors are involved, multi factors are involved. That's why we are calling it as a complex eye disease because number of factors are involved. It is a multifactorial uh, disease. It is a complex eye disease. Right? Okay. So in the normal IOP, intraocular pressure is a 20 to 22 mm of Hg. It is a normal. 21 also, okay, no problem, oh, one uh, plus or minus, whatever it may be. But in glaucoma IOP, intraocular pressure in the glaucoma condition, it is a greater than 22 mm of Hg. So we are measuring, this is also very important, just like a BP, mm of Hg, uh, we are uh, using it. So this is also called as a ocular hypertension. Generally, we are using a blood pressure as a hypertension. Whenever it was excess, then the 120 by 80 is normal. Whenever it crosses, we are calling it as a hypertension. Here also, uh, ocular hypertension, ocular, because inside the eye. And here what happened when there was a pressure, here see the red color, how the it is becoming a red. This, this is an optic nerve, we know very well. So it becomes very red. When there was a high pressure, it is a dangerous situation. That's why you can see the red color here. But initially blue, initially. But when the pressure is increases, it turns to red here. So that's why I kept the red. This optic nerve will be damaged. So loss of the field vision, you can't see. That's why it is a glaucoma is very dangerous disease also. But however, it is a simple if you give a treatment. So whenever there was a high pressure inside the eyeball, that is aqueous humor has to be go out. For that purpose, what they are doing is surgery, uh, laser iridiometry here exactly. This is a point here. So they will put the eye uh, laser rays. So whenever there was a formation of hole, proper drainage will be there. This aqueous humor which is present here, it will be drainage properly. It goes outside. So inside the pressure will be less. But however, we are studying our topic is drugs, only drugs, not the surgery. Okay, that's why we will see only the drugs used in the... Uh, see here, this is a laser iridiometry. This is a side view. Exactly here, the point where you, uh, you have we have mentioned here, there... Uh, the doctors will make a punch with the help of a laser. Not They are not using any needles, nothing. Only laser rays. Okay, so on so potency they are using it. Yeah, glaucoma is a two types. That is an open angle and a closed angle. Very, very important. Here, if you see the open angle, uh, also called as a wide angle. Open angle, wide angle. See here, there was an angle between the cornea and iris. You see here, it is an iris. And this is a cornea. There was a very big gap. There was an open angle, open angle, very wide, wide angle is there. That's why this is called an open angle or wide angle, whereas a closed angle or narrow. See here the place, cornea and iris. See, very less place. See, is he, see here, iris is almost touched with the cornea. See the pointer here, where, where I am showing that. 
that's why this is called a, exactly the point is a closed angle here there is a closed whereas a, here it was opened how much open is there see iris doesn't touch the uh, cornea here iris is almost uh, touched with the cornea that is a problem here so that's why this is called a open angle or wide angle that's why this is also called as a this is a closed angle or narrow angle there was a very narrow or completely closed angle also okay and here also same problem both blockage of the drainage canal here also blockage of the drainage canals completely it will be blocked in both cases uh, here what happened when there was a drainage blocked slow increase in the in iop slow increase but here sudden increase in the iop intraocular pressure the patient will feel tension eyeball will be feel very tension and pain also you will feel the pain of the eye because of the sudden increase in the intraocular pressure but it is a less common this closed angle is less common it happens in the 10% of the people only more damage is noticed here inner walls more retina damage will be there that's why it, it need a sudden immediate requirement immediately they have to do a surgery okay or treatment whatever it may be here there is a less damage or no damage this is the most common open is a most common it is a 90% only it is a open for all like that 90% you can be remember see the lens of the thing also. and here what happened exactly you can see the ciliary body secretes the aqueous humor this will go like this actually this will go that's why this is called a open angle and it enters into anterior chamber this chamber see here this chamber the chamber which is present the space which is present between the cornea and iris is called as a anterior chamber and the chamber which is present between the lens and the iris is called as a posterior chamber so this is posterior chamber this is a an anterior chamber okay so what happens ciliary body whenever it was secreted the aqueous humor okay the aqueous humor will be entered here it will be entered and uh, here the pressure also will be build up okay and <clears throat> drainage is blocked here also here also blocked and here also blocked okay and pressure will be increased here also same here what happen it doesn't enter because iris is almost touch with the lens see here the iris doesn't touch the lens here here iris is touched the lens and also iris is touched with the cornea also so whatever the aqueous humor which is secreted here because of the closed contact here again it will be there only in the posterior chamber only it doesn't enter into the anterior chamber very very important bit in closed angle aqueous humor doesn't enter into the anterior chamber in the open angle only since it is a open uh, the aqueous humor enter into the anterior chamber but both are the drainage is blocked this is exactly what happened in the glaucoma so easily we can uh, remember what we have to these are the drugs used in the glaucoma screenshot i already summarized many things and uh, here i have mentioned very clearly what you have to do is either you have to decrease the aqueous production number one aqueous humor production you have to decrease or increase the aqueous outflow so either you can be use this or you can be use this they have you have a two choices you can use the both also no problem no problem one side you can decrease the aqueous humor another side you can increase the outflow so that pressure will be balanced here pressure you can be reduced drastically and uh, aqueous production uh, where this aqueous production number one carbonic anhydrous enzyme so it is see here this is a ciliary body this is shape this is called a ciliary body this ciliary body or ciliary epithelium it consists of a see here these are the star like structures star just like a star carbonic anhydrase this is an enzyme so carbonic hydrase is an enzyme which is responsible for the secretion of the aqueous humor which is present on the ciliary body of the eye that point you have to keep in your mind so what we have to do we have to prevent this we have to kill this enzyme a carbos anhydrase enzyme carbonic anhydrase enzyme you have to kill it so when you will kill it here production of aqueous humor will be reduced that is a main secretion of the um, thing i will show you uh, what is a carbonic anhydrase enzyme yeah here you can see carbonic anhydrase enzyme inhibitors see this is a carbonic anhydrase enzyme why we are calling as a carbonic anhydrase carbonic anhydrase because it produces a bicarbonate ion that is a main uh, thing so this bicarbonate ion is produced by the carbonic anhydrase it reacts with the hydrogen atom and it uh, what happened here osmotic gradients it causes osmotic gradient and h2o will be inflow 
so aqueous humor will be produced because of this bicarbonate ion in the posterior chamber not anterior chamber in the posterior this is anterior okay like that posterior chamber water will be entered so aqueous humor will be entered now if you give a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor see negative this is negative this is negative this is negative this is also negative so all are negative only so no water will be entered like this see here water is no negative negative all are negative one so aqueous humor will be reduced see here the same points only i have mentioned here carbonic anhydrase is present in the ciliary epithelium it is responsible for the production of the bicarbonate ion this bicarbonate ion interacts with the hydrogen ion and ion produces the h2o this h2o enters into the posterior chamber and increases the aqueous humor so iop will be increased so what you have to do give a acetazolamide it is a one of the best uh, example acetazolamide carbon ca ca means uh, you can uh, charted accountancy you can be remember like that ca you have to inhibit the ca acetazolamide brinjolamide dorzolamide all zolamide 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 like that and next is a to a like that you can remember alpha to agonist a to a next to b to b so ca charted accountancy a to a b to b so that you can complete this portion so all these will cause a decrease in the aqueous production e a to a agonist what you have to do alpha 2 receptor where here you can see here alpha 2 receptor this is alpha 1 which is present on the blood vessels this is a alpha 2 receptor here you can see alpha 2 what you have to do you have to give a support alpha 2 agonist means supporters so if you give a support to alpha 2 selective agonist like a apraclonidine brimaclodine it reduces aqueous production that is a one type of mechanism and blockers see a to a agonist here reverse beta 2 blockers you have to see here beta 2 this is alpha 2 both are side by side like that you can remember alpha 2 you have to give a support beta 2 you have to block timolol betaxolol levibunolol lol lols will come like atinolol propranolol that is a beta 1 blockers atinolol pro here beta 2 blockers timolol beta <coughs> so <coughs> decreases the aqueous production next is increases the aqueous outflow there is a two type of outflow is there one is trabecular uvoscleral outflow what is this uvoscleral trabecular this is the trabecular you can see here the pointer here trabecular outflow green color so aqueous humor which is secreted by the ciliary body it enters into aqueous flow humor here and it will be drainaged. This is called a trabecular. And if the aqueous humor will flow and here see the division is there. It divides like this and yet it enters into the ciliary body and the sclera. From the sclera it will be, this is called a um, uh, uveoscleral. Uveo. Uveoscleral outflow. This is uveoscleral outflow. This is the trabecular outflow. Now, what you have to do, these are the drugs which increases the uveoscleral outflow. And these are the drugs which increases the trabecular. Both are increase only here. Because this is also outflow, this is also outflow. But channel is different. Channel is different. These are non-selective alpha agonists are there, epinephrine, okay, dipyorin, And cholinomimetic agonists are there, like muscaronic agonists. Pylocarpin, very, very important drug. Very, very important. Pylocarpin, muscaronic agonists. Okay, and uh, this is also cholinomimetic. This is also cholinomimetic, but here this is a direct acting. It is an indirect acting because it uh, increases the concentration of acetylcholine by decreasing the cholinesterase enzyme. Whereas uh, here, <coughs> acetylcholine is directly increased. That's why this is called a direct. Okay, this is an indirect. As cholinesterase inhibitors, physostigmine, neostigmine widely used. You can, okay, latans of prost. These are the prostaglandin analog. How these prostaglandin analogues will act? Okay, here you can see the alpha one receptor. Okay, these are blood vessels are there, uh, ciliary blood vessels are there, ciliary body epithelium and all. Okay, and prostaglandin analogues how it increases the uveoscleral outflow. See uveoscleral outflow here, very dense matter is there. There is no proper drainage, so we have to break down. That's why uveoscleral breakdown all the drugs whatever is there uveoscleral 
it is a mechanification of you so prostaglandin uveous scleral outflow is increased what it crosses the cornea prostaglandins okay uh, why prostaglandins means here i have mentioned already prostaglandin analogue keep in your mind uveous scleral outflow all prostaglandin analogues okay increases the uveous scleral outflow how it increases yeah it crosses the cornea and it produces a prostaglandin acid this prostaglandin acid acts on a fp receptor and it initiates the cell nucleus this cell nucleus what happen it increases the one enzyme this enzyme matrix metallo protein a nase proteonase means breakdown proteins will be breakdown proteins will be breakdown so matrix metallo proteinase proteinase it is an enzyme this enzyme will be secreted by the ciliary muscle okay because of the prostaglandin releases the prostaglandin acid this acts on the fp receptor it stimulates the ciliary muscle so matrix proteinase will be released so collagen like this collagens will be converted into collagen fragments see here how the gaps are came this is a complete collagen this is a collagen fragments so whenever the fragments will come outside the fluid will be go easily so increased uv is clear of outflow this is a mechanism of action very 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 important in all the examination prostaglandin prostaglandin acid that points you have to keep in your mind it break down so the collagen where this collagen is present means here all this parts will be break down uveous scleral okay by the prostaglandin okay right so we can uh, end our uh, session here